Hi, this is Victor from Parallels, and today I'll show you how VDI works in terms of cloning virtual machines or adding into a remote application server as a service for your users. As you've seen or have read in the documentation, we work with different hypervisors, VMware, Hyper-V, Zen Server, and KVM. In my demo environment today, I'm using Hyper-V, where I already have a few virtual machines where it's serving for VDI. I have Windows 7 and Windows 10. For you to start using VDI, what you need to do is the following. Have a Windows guest operating system added to the domain using DHCP and have the RAS guest VDI agent installed. Then what we need to do is the following. We go to Remote Application Server Console. We go to Farm, VDI, and we'll click on the VDI guest settings. And we'll see the list of virtual machines, which is similar to what we see here in Hyper-V. Windows 10 is powered off, but it has been verified before. So I will use this guest as part of our template today. So we click on RAS templates. We create a new template. And now select Windows 10. The machine will be powered on, on, and the guest agent is already installed. Let's click on Make Template. The VM will be powered First, off. Let's use the template name. I want to use W10. Max number of guests. I have a limited size in my demo environment, so I'll say maybe three. And pre-created virtual guest VMs means if I have one started, how many others will be automatically cloned for us? I will start with one. And what would be the guest VM name that will be added to your domain? I'll start with, let's say, VDI W10 dash. And then that will be the name. Do you want to delete unused guests or keep them as persistent for unlimited time? You can set this option now. But what is very important, it's the cloning method. You can either choose full clone or a link clone. I will use link clone for multiple reasons. It's faster, uses much less disk space. We'll set the location where I want to keep those images saved. And now we need to do the sysprep or rasprep preparation. The owner name in this case, I will use administrator. Organization will be parallels. The domain name, in my case, it's lab.poc. And we'll set a target organization unit for us to save the VDI settings. So we'll be querying the domain controller. Now set the organization unit. I want to save my VDI computer name and settings. Click OK. Next, here where it's where you need to use your keys. You can either use KMS or multiple key activation. I already have KMS in my environment. You can either test template to be created. It's good for you to know how it works. Or and then click on Finish. So now the template is being configured. And as soon as I click the button Apply, so let me just move the screen a little bit here. Those settings will be saved and replicated to the publishing agents. And very shortly, the virtual machines will start to be created. At the same time, what we have to do here, VDI Windows 10, now it's been created. We need to publish as this resource for the end user. So we come to Publishing. We can click on Add, New Desktop. We'll pick Virtual Desktop. And I'll call VDI Windows 10. And instead of using any guest VM, we can use the template we just created. And here we pick Windows 10. Click on Finish. We click on the Apply button. Now, the sysprep and the RASPAP process, it's happening here behind the scenes. So the first time the virtual machine is running, take a few minutes to be prepared. As you can see here in Hyper-V, we're preparing this virtual machine as we speak. Once the process is completed, 
we can come to the REST client. We'll connect to the lab as an end user. And I can double click on the Windows 10 VDI. What will happen is automatically we'll, we'll trigger a new VM to be created and we are preparing the desktop for the end user. And now we'll see here the Windows 10 login process happening. So depending on the performance of your hypervisor, this will take you know, just a couple of seconds or maybe a couple of minutes to have that completed. So while this is running, let me show you another thing about the VDI cloning process. Here is the image that we just triggered to use. And on the pre-created, we added the option number one. We're already cloning another virtual machine for this particular environment or other users that could be connecting to it. This is my VDI created, my Windows desktop, Cortana, and all of the applications I can use. Now, you can either disconnect from the start or click here on the X button of the Windows desktop, and later on, you come back to your Parallels client and you can actually reconnect it. So we keep the session as always persistent mode for end users. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship. The last piece of what I wanted to show you on the VDI side, in the farm settings, VDI host and templates, we have the ability to test, check the status, show the guest VMs that we have already created and the current status, you can um, pick a specific guest or tenant, delete, recreate. So you have full management besides using you know, Hyper-V for that matter. Now, in terms of recreating all of the guests, you can do that. You can schedule it through PowerShell API. And if you need to do updates, you can set the virtual machines to maintenance mode, make all of the modifications into your template. And once that process is completed, you can redeploy or you know, re-trigger the creation of all of those virtual machines. In the property side, we see the same settings we did, we did see during the wizard. If you want to change the names, if you want to change the number of guests recreated, where they're saved, preparation, if you're using RAS prep, which is our own version of SysPrep, which is optimized for VDI, or even change the keys or even review all of the settings or even retest it. Now, VDI, as we all know, might take additional resources than RDSH, but we know certain apps only run on Windows 7 or Windows 10 or XP. That's how you can leverage a single solution that has VDI, RDSH support, and remote PC. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you today in this video. Thank you, and if you have additional questions, please come to our Facebook page or parallels.com for more information.